So it seems Daisy Ridley has been on a massive press run at the moment, promoting her latest movie, but also in a very clear attempt to turn the tide on her upcoming Star Wars film. As she keeps voicing her support for Star Wars fans, and is clearly trying to win them over for this movie, as on two separate interviews over the last week, she said this. Were you surprised by how divisive it was, the reception to it? I think it's still upsetting because you don't want people to feel like you've like not served sure. the thing that they're a fan of. I, I just have to ask because there are some of the, I'd say extreme Star Wars fans who have made this a conversation on the internet about how they don't want a female director, mm. which seems bizarre because episodes of The Mandalorian mm. were directed by females. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy mm -hmm. has been overseeing all of this. So, you know, what is your take on that? I think my take is things get blown out of proportion mm -hmm. and that interactions I've ever had with people have been nothing but wonderful and supportive. And now to make it clear, I'm not attacking her for this, as I understand you'd want your movie to do well and you'd want to make it as successful as possible. However, the only reason I question what she's doing is because it seems very similar to what Rachel Zegler recently did for Snow White, where all of a sudden she was also on the side of the fans and was also trying to turn the tide on that film. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. The cartoon's so beloved. It's like a monumental moment in film history. Yeah. It was like the first feature length cartoon yeah. movie to the point where it, it won honorary Oscars and yeah. all of these amazing things. That and so while I'm not making any assumptions here, it does become easy to draw the connection between Daisy Ridley's strategy and Rachel Zegler's strategy, as they're both trying to promote a Disney film, so possibly this is just a damage control strategy that Disney have their lead actors do when they can clearly see a movie is doomed to fail, yet they want it to succeed by any means necessary, so they have their lead star come out and try and side with the fans and try and be kind, humble and grounded and try and turn the tide on this film. However, on the same token, Daisy Ridley has always seemed quite kind and grounded, so I don't want to say that she's lying here. However, I'm just pointing out that it's an easy question to ask, just given how similar it is to what Rachel Zegler did. But what makes these interview clips even worse is how much I cringe just watching Daisy Ridley try and walk that fine line between being on Disney's side, but also siding with the fans. Or in your heart of hearts, was you're I like, surprised? Yeah. Uh, because I genuinely feel bad for her trying to walk this very thin tightrope that she has to walk in order to market this movie, but she can't annoy any of the audience base, and she also can't annoy her employer, as of course she wants to keep getting hired by these studios, so it's definitely a very hard position for Daisy Ridley to be in. But even though it is such a tough position, it's a position that she chose to go into, as she needed to return to Star Wars, because to put it lightly, her career wasn't exactly taking off in other directions. It's still upsetting. Because the original Star Wars trilogy should have made her a massive global superstar, but it did the exact opposite and pretty much hindered her career because due to all of the backlash for her character and all of the backlash for the movie, she was clearly not seen as marketable and was clearly seen as box office poison, so big studios weren't really jumping at the opportunity to hire Daisy Ridley. So in a way, there's a lot riding on this film for her because if this movie can turn out well, then it can definitely kickstart her career again and hopefully give her more opportunities in the future. But the quality of the film is out of her control, which is why you also need to question her motives in these interviews, because she could be using these interviews to try and get the audience base supporting her and try and win fans, so that regardless of how good the Star Wars movie ends up, she still has support and comes out unscathed, therefore being able to move into other blockbuster franchises or other big movies because she won't be hated as an actor and she'll gain that separation from Star Wars that she wasn't able to do post the first trilogy. But like I said, I don't want to say that she's scheming here or say that she's trying to be malicious in these interviews as she has always seemed like quite a nice and grounded person. However, I am just saying it's a question that needs to be asked. And as someone who does believe in second chances and redemption arcs, 
perhaps I am rooting for Daisy Ridley here because I definitely think it was pretty unfair the way she wasn't really being hired by many other films down to how badly Star Wars performed with the fans and it was definitely unfair that she copped a lot of hate and a lot of backlash herself when she never really said anything in interviews that should have made it personal about her as she never really came out against the fans and she wasn't the one leading the charge on the toxic fandom backlash that was more so coming from Disney executives and more so from the media so it was pretty sad to see her career flop like that so it would be nice to see her do well moving forward. However the situation between Daisy Ridley and Disney and the way in which they hindered her career does raise a very important question and raises a new issue for Disney to worry about which is the fact that Disney have definitely lost a lot of power. And what I mean by that is that back in the day, Disney was such a big company, such a successful studio, that any actor would jump at the opportunity to be in a Disney movie. Whether that was a Disney animated film or the MCU or Star Wars, many actors would have wanted to be in those movies because it looked like a surefire way to launch your career and become a global megastar. However, ever since that original Star Wars trilogy dropped, many actors started to notice how Daisy Ridley didn't become that movie star because of Disney, it actually did the exact opposite. And so now we're starting to see the tide shift and actors are actually refusing a Disney movie because they see just how nuclear they could be. As we've recently had Steven Ewan, who was originally signed on to be in an MCU film, and then he chose to leave the movie due to quote unquote scheduling issues. A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit. Bullshit. However, the question you have to ask there is that would Steven Ewan have left the MCU if this was 2017? I don't think so. I think the reason he says these scheduling conflicts is because he knows just how badly Disney's failing and any actor involved with these projects will also suffer a lot of blowback for their career. And he's not the only one who's chosen to leave the MCU. We've also seen that Ayo Debery, who was quite early on in her career, has also also chose to leave the MCU for the same reason. So once again, you have to ask the question, are these quote unquote scheduling conflicts really getting in the way of what they're able to do in the MCU? I wouldn't say so. I would say the actors are starting to get quite scared of what could happen to their career if these movies fail. And so now all of a sudden the actors hold the power and not Disney, which is a massive blow for the company as that exact power was what allowed them the ability to land many big name actors and if they were able to still hold on to that power it would be an easy way for them to turn the tide on their failing company by hiring great big name actors that have a lot of support to get money back in the box office and start being profitable again but now that they've lost that power I don't really know if they have the same pool so I don't really know if they're going to be able to get all the big name actors that they need in order to turn the tide on these films it's it's going to require a lot more hard work where they're actually going to have to develop a good story once and for all, which is clearly something they've struggled to do as of late. However, I must admit that it is good to see artists holding the power and not studios, as we've even seen Jeremy Allen White become a huge global megastar in his own right when he had a failed MCU meeting. And he didn't become a huge star because of a big blockbuster project, he became a huge star because of a good quality series, and that's exactly what the Hollywood industry needs to move towards and move away from these failing franchises that continue to get worse year after year. But all of this just boils right back down to Daisy Ridley and Star Wars, and I do look forward to seeing how her career can move forward post-Star Wars and how these movies end up being. However, I don't have many high hopes for these films, as Disney have proven over the last few years that they've definitely lost their ability to tell a great story, and I just don't know if they're going to be able to turn it around with this film, but I do look forward to seeing Daisy Ridley find some separation from Star Wars in order to allow her career to succeed in other places. But what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on Daisy Ridley's comments in these interviews? Do you believe her? Do you not? Let me know down below in the comments. If you like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all on my next video.